watching OG Badger on Cinemills TV. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. OG Badger, it's August 15th, 2021, and it's so good to sit, have you sit before me, bro. It's good to be sitting here. Our audience, your audience, the tribe, everybody's been wondering what's up with you and where have you been online, man? Can you give us an update? So right about the time I was getting fed up with the trolls as it is, here I was doing everything I can to help my fellow man, and I'm hearing all this shit. He's loaded, he's this, he's that. And it just got old, you know? Like, I was putting myself out there and, like, trying to be a productive member of society, trying to do all this stuff. And I don't, what was I doing it for? For acknowledgement or for someone else's okay? You know, I was doing it for my okay. And I didn't need a, a fan base to do it or anything. You know, I still do the same things that I do. Um, I just got tired of the trolls, man. You know, it gets old. Uh, JD from, uh, what is it? Prison Break Raw, he's a friend of mine, and the trolls actually came to his house, and they robbed him and did a bunch of that. I don't want to go into it too much because that's his story to tell, but, you know, like, I don't, I don't need all that shit, you know? And as many people as were hitting in the, you know, the section, the type it out section, whatever. Uh, nobody's ever said nothing to my face when they met me on the streets. They're always happy to see me or, hey, what's up, OG? You know, I'm like, you know, so I just, it just got old, you know. Plus, I was going through my, uh, I had some health issues going on that just at that time, I was just fed up with everything. And then that was like a, a major bomb, boom, you know. Like everything that I'd done all, along, all throughout life had caught up with me all at once, it seemed like. Right. And you know what, what kills me is, you know, as a former addict and a guy in recovery and a guy who's speaking into other addicts, everybody defaults to the worst thing. Like you're on drugs and you're doing Always. dope. <laughs> I mean, come on, man, you have some health issues. And can we, t can we tell the audience and your tribe a little bit about those issues or are those personal or? I mean, I don't care. The, there's a lot of tribe members that I still talk to or touch bases with me through Instagram or whatever. And so I, I'm in uh, stage four kidney failure. Um, I got gout so bad that I just want to shoot myself most days. Um, I don't know, COPD. It's just like the list goes on and it all hit me at once, you know, like all the years of drinking Pruno and <laughs> shooting dope in the joint and all this and that and shooting dope on the streets. It just, it all caught up with me at once, you know. Getting old isn't for the week, I can assure you that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, and, and you know, it started to play on my mental abilities as well. Like, I, I became very depressed behind it. Um, I didn't need other negativities feeding me, feeding into that depression and making me uh, worse off than what I was, you know. So that's what's going on with that. And stage four kidney failure, I, I just, I never would have thought, you know, because I had done labs for when I went to take my hep C treatment, everything was fine. And then a year after I took the, the treatment, they tell me I'm in stage four kidney failure. And uh, just like my head just went one place, you know, like depression. So, and I hate to say that because I was telling all my fans, you can pull it, you know, and um, my fans, my friends, whatever the case, you know, because I, I really appreciated everybody out there that would uh, reach out to me. And I don't know, there's uh, someone told me, you helped me get my law license, man. You helped me go back to school, you know. And I appreciate hearing stuff like that. And I appreciate that man. He's always been there for, it, for me. We've never met. We've talked online. And that's about it, you know. Uh, I still talk to, I talk to a lot of people. Let's just say that, you know. And I'm grateful for him. So sometimes they call it inconvenience times. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody, you know. Like, I, I, let's just say the shoe uh, prepared me for this little depression I've gone through in the last year. I put on what? It feels like 100 pounds, but probably around 60 pounds um, for lack of exercise, lack of, lack of facing life, you know? And 
I sit and think about that in the nighttime, you know, I'm like, man, I haven't done anything productive today at all. You know, and if I barely made a meeting, then that's a good day, you know, and it's just, I'm not happy with what's going on in my life today. It took all I could to get in the car and come over here today. I know, you know man. I was I like, know. man, I don't feel like going over there. I'm not calling with another excuse this time. You know, uh, I mean, according to Big Sid, I'm dead, you know. So, and which is funny because me and him uh, actually talked. I don't know if you wanted. Yeah, I, I want to ask you, who the is Big Sid? I mean, what? Is he real fake? So, I, I... No, he's a comedian who has several channels. He plays a queer. Uh, he plays, uh, I like his queer, queer role. He does it pretty well, you know what I mean? Like you couldn't tell that that's him until uh, Miss Harriet pointed it out. She goes, that's the same dude, you know, because he does just change up his appearances a little bit. And I was like, oh man, it is. Because in the beginning he was trolling me like, you know, and I got at him. And um, I told him, you know, let my name taste like whoop in your mouth, whatever, you know. Uh, and he goes, bro, I'm just a comedian trying to get by, you know, like you're hot right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm hitting on you. So I was like, all right, I get it. But like back off the pedophilia shit and all that kind of stuff, you know, because if somebody finds that funny, they might want to look in the mirror a little longer. You know, there's something wrong with them. Right. So that's how I feel. So, so Big Sid is really, it's satire. It's not like, because when he got online and said, you guys, OG Badger's dead, he sold me on that. And he sold a <laughs> lot of called your, immediately. I called you. And we, we didn't even think we'd get you live. And we were videotaping it just to see if you'd answer. And the first thing out of your mouth is, I'm alive, bro. <laughs> yeah, because I, so many people had called behind it, you know. And I'm like, man, let them think what they want to think. And he goes, uh, my friend goes, no, you can't do that, man. Lots of people were counting on you. And, you know, they look, for, look forward to hearing from you. And, you know, you gave them that little oomph in the day. I'm like, man, just let them think what they want to think. Because some days I wish I was dead, you know. And he's like, I know, I, you know, I just had to talk to my friend over here. He comes over every Friday night. And we play cribbage and I cook dinner, you know, and it's a cool little thing. But I was just worn out when he got there last night and he was worn out. So we basically fell asleep on the couch, you know, when we started a movie and that's all I remember. And he said, that's all he remembers. And he works at a, one of the local uh, detox re rehabilitation centers and he loves his job there, you know. And we go back, he was my celly in the joint for you know, a couple of years, three years. So, yeah. Right. Badger, you know what kills me is that, that if you look at your comments and, and the people that follow you, it's very obvious the love outweighs the hate. And it, That's true. You That's know what true. I mean? No, yeah. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is this. Like, at that time, me and Miss Harriet were going through our shit. Uh, reading that stuff, she would text over, can you believe they're saying this? Now, she takes it really personally when she reads shit like that, you know? She, we gotta whoop, get at him. You know, she just goes full-blown psycho with it. So it was just another thing, fire I had to put out with her, you know, and- And she is a ginger, so it's a, it's a major <laughs> she's, fire. She's a beautiful ginger and, you know, uh, she's got a few issues of her own. She's a female, you know, what can I say? So, I'm just kidding, babe. So, you know, uh, it just, everything was compiling, you know, the health issues, all this. And I took it, I could have taken it a better way, I believe, and just uh, pushed forward with it, and you know. But I didn't want people thinking I was seeking sympathy or any of that crap, because I figured out I was doing this show for me. You know, it, it really was for me. Um, there was some, you know, I don't know how many people watched the channel where my boy came in and I put him into a house. At Was that Jim's Tony? House. Yes. Yeah. Is he all right, by the way? He's definitely not all right. Oh, no, man. he's in no way, shape, or form all right. Um, they revived him on the way to the hospital, but he had lost so much brain, so much oxygen during that time that uh, he still can't talk. He still thinks he's talking. You know. It, 
<laughs> you know, he'll do that. And he thinks, he gets frustrated because you can't understand what he's saying. You know, um, he's still trying to get high, <laughs> you know. Oh, wow. So, I mean, he could definitely do the, uh, uh, you know, like, like, damn, man, you haven't learned anything, you know. And that was rather heart-wrenching, man, knowing that I put him there. I get the phone call from Jimmy, you know, and I was just like, he's like, man, your boy died in my bathroom. And Jimmy was very upset with me, you know. He's like, how serious is this guy? I'm like, he's as serious as they come, bro, when they come. You know how serious is any addict when they want to get clean? They believe they're serious right at that particular moment of desperation, but a couple days into suffering, <laughs> I want to get high, you know? And that's what he did, man. It's, it's a chicken and the egg thing. It's right. like, what comes first? It's exactly. like, well, he, Tony wanted the help. You came in at the ninth inning, two outs, full count, man, and you grabbed him. And man, if he had gone another day, he'd be he'd be home to Valhalla, right? Probably. Well, I mean, he followed a Christian religion, but you know, uh, yeah, probably. You know, yeah. like um, the problem is, and a lot of you addicts out there want to get clean, and then you get clean, and then you know, a couple of weeks go by, and your usage level is, you know, like. You got no tolerance for nothing, and then you take a hit of fentanyl. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna die, of course. I just lost Blythe. You know, my girl of seven years before Harriet. Uh, her dad found her dead on her birthday. Man, I just got through talking to her. Uh, I had no idea. You know, I told her how proud of her I was and all that. I got her out of Tarzana and took her home. Um, and I don't know where she got it, but she got it and she took a hit and her poor dad had to find him, find her, you know? Like, could you imagine that? I just couldn't imagine that, you know? But anyway, uh, yeah, man, people's tolerance gets so low and um, there's a doctor at one of the treatment centers that's basically like my mom and she tells me I see it every day. So, you know, it's just heart wrenching when I went and told her about Blythe. Yeah. So.